Yeah. So I um, put a little bit of my super loop on the threads of the two cable connections and also a little bit on the plastic so that this rubber plug doesn't get st stuck as badly as it was. So now we have to fiddle that on there and get it in place. We already cleaned the contacts in the very beginning, or at least I put some, uh, if I can get it in there. Ay, ay, ay. Hey. Uh -huh. This is really short. I made this too short, I think. Oh, here we go. So I just needed to pull it out a little bit. Uh, let's find the little screw. This should also be a stainless steel screw, but it isn't. Oh yeah, I'm never gonna see that again. Oh, I do. Now it's on the ground. I'm just using a little bit here. And this also goes into plastic, so don't crank too hard. <clears throat> Yep. All right, so. Yeah, that's good. And now, I don't know, let's do the, the speedometer cable. There you go. That was the one that was stuck, but now with the grease on it, that shouldn't happen again. And yeah. Tighten it finger tight, that's it. And now the tachometer cable over here. Surprisingly, the threads are different. I wonder if they did that intentionally so you can't mix it up, potentially. German engineering. Okay, let's put it back on the bracket. Okay, I think that's it. And then, once you have it in place, then you just take your 10 millimeter wrench, which I have already put away, of course. 10 millimeter, there it is. All right, and then we tighten that up. Yeah. And that just pinches the plastic together and clamps it down on this metal bracket. That's a pretty much all it's held in place. So also, again, do not tighten too hard. Of course, you don't want it to fall off, but you know, inside the housing is a metal plate that kind of reinforces everything. But here on the outside, it's just the bolt head and a couple washers. Click and click, and the last one. And now, oh, the orange needles are really nice and orangey now. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, that's good. Okay, yeah, let's give you guys a 
quick look at this. There it is with the new orange needles. I'm going to start up the engine here real quick, open the garage, start up the engine. At least we can see the uh, tachometer work. And then I'm going to figure out a way with my fake GoPro to uh, record this for you guys. So here we go. Seems to be pretty steady. Looks pretty good, I gotta say. So I don't know if it's really much, much better. There's still a little bit of a dancing going on, but it's a mechanical driven tachometer. The speedometer we will have to check on a test ride. So let's do that next. So guys, I just went for a ride uh, to see if my tachometer or speedometer are working. And they're working, but they're completely out of calibration. So this is the tachometer here, and it's showing way too high of an RPM. So what I can do now is hook up an electronic uh, RPM gauge to my bike, so I have a proper readout. And then I can, this little arm here, that holds the end of that little uh, spring in there. It's a co uh, not a coil spring, uh, kind of a wound up spring and the higher the tension is the more resistance the spring will give to the needle rising so right now it's showing way too high so i have to increase the tension on the spring to lower the rpm indication and this arm just moves sideways so now i'm increasing the tension by doing that now i have to put it back in hook it back up to the bike start up the bike and see what the readout is and then i have to do the same thing on the speedometer as well. The arm is the same, the spring is the same. It's just a little harder to get to because of all this other stuff in there. So I have to probably go in here from the side somewhere. So this is uh, regulating this instrument. And uh, this is gonna take me a couple attempts. All right, so I have engine running. And uh, uh, the RPM gauge is almost sitting flat on the stop. So here is, oh, I don't know if you guys can see. Here's a little gauge, currently 960 RPM. So our needle would need to be a little higher. So it looks like I have tightened the spring up a little too tight. And now I'm going to try to ride again and check the adjustments that I've made on this one. I hope I got if I'm close enough, if I'm close within a couple miles, three, four, five miles an hour, I think I would be fine. Anyways, let's see. So I uh, took my speedometer, tachometer off again. So on the tachometer, we have to reduce the tension that I put on there. On the speedometer, we have to increase a little more. So we're, we're closing in on it. All right, guys, so I just wanted to show you one last piece of information in case anyone ever tries to do that. So it is really difficult to get to the, to the adjustment level of that spring. It's back there. Um, you can go from here or through here, and you can see it. And then I used an Allen key, an even smaller one than this one here, to go through and push it. So I know um, the, the speedometer was showing too high of a speed. When I was going 30, it was sh showing 45. Um, so that means I had to build up more tension. The tension of the spring is built up in the counterclockwise direction. So I had to push the, the lever, which was pointing this way. Sorry, this way. I had to push it over this way. I had to take this now out three times. I have worked my way to about a uh, four miles an hour difference. So when I'm when I'm showing 30, we're actually only going 26. So I just 
notched the, the lever over a little bit more. I want to get it a little closer. So on this one, it was really complicated on the uh, tachometer. Since there is not this, this whole mechanism in there, you can see that lever very easily. You can get to it very easily. Um, so our RPM gauge was showing way too low. I got it to where at about 3000 RPM, it's almost dead nuts on. So I just fudged it one more time a little bit. But uh, so a few times playing with those with those adjustment levers. So if you reduce tension, you will sh high, uh, show higher speed. If you increase tension, it will show lower speed. Same with the RPM as well. So less tension, more RPM, more tension counterclockwise, uh, you will have less RPM showing. And uh, yeah, I just used my uh, vacuum uh, actu actuated uh, RPM gauge there. Um, so it takes a vacuum signal from uh, one of the carburetors. And then for this one here, unfortunately, I have to always put it back together and then ride it and see and use my uh, GPS speedometer on my uh, phone. But worked really well. So took me half an hour, got it all dialed in, and now I'm going to put it all back together and put it on the bike. So it looks like I finally have found a way to record audio from my Senna communicator. I hope the audio quality is pretty decent. Now we have um, engine running, it's still cold. Um, so the speedometer, I managed to get in the realm. So when we're showing 30 here, we're going 28 in accordance to GPS. And the tachometer, I managed to get uh, roughly you know, it's maybe a hundred RPMs off. So if it shows 2000, maybe we are at 2050 or 1950, somewhere in between there. It, it bounces around. It's not super accurate, but uh, at least we're, you know, if I show 3000 RPM, it's more or less 3000 RPM plus minus 50, I would say. And the speed, speed is actually uh, how I prefer it. The speedometer here shows a little faster than the actual speed uh, by about two miles an hour so let's do a quick little ride around the neighborhood here it's really cold it's in the low 30s fahrenheit that's why my bike doesn't want to um, heat up all that quickly so this is the first time uh, recording via bluetooth on my phone while I'm at the same time having speedometer app running, but I think it might work. So gotta pay attention here sometimes, especially in our neighborhood. It's it's all residential here. People don't pay attention where they're going, or just drive out of their driveways without looking. So now we're showing a little over 30 on the speedometer, and we're right at 30 on the GPS here. I hope you guys can see that. Still a little lean bog down when I open up the throttle. I also put a brand new front tire on yesterday. Uh, so I got to be careful breaking that in a little bit. I hope I, don't for I didn't forget to um, tighten up the bolts properly. Also did uh, one brake line in the front, so I had to bleed my brakes, and I hope I did a good job on that too. And then my handlebar was all loose yesterday, because I wanted to readjust the uh, steering head bearings a little bit, give it a little bit more preload. And I hope I didn't forget to tighten that up either, but so far so good. Handlebar position feels like it was before. Our little GPS screen there seems to be all working. It's pretty freezing cold here. Whew. All right, so we're going 35 on my speedometer and 33 on the GPS. So it's about two miles an hour off. And I think that is actually my preferred. Most cars actually always show a little higher than, than the actual speed, 
unless you have aftermarket tires and such that that completely changes things but uh with your stock tires your car should always show a little faster than you are actually going and uh yeah so that's good and i already spent enough time on putting the speedometer tachometer together and then taking it apart again you know so I always put it together just so I can mount it here on the bike do a test ride measurement and then um, just hold it together with enough screws that it doesn't fall off <clears throat> so yeah a little under 30 now 26 27 that's perfect that's all we needed I'm gonna go on a camping riding camping trip just a few weeks from now and I'm not sure if I'm really excited about it if it's, if, if it's as cold as it is today I'm gonna be freezing my butt off this bike here just has no capacity to support any kind of heated gear like you know heated heated vest and heated boots and heated gloves and heated underwear and you know the stuff So 40, a little over 40 on the Speedo, 38 on the, oh, that's perfect. I like it. That's good enough for me. And my uh, tachometer, if I really get bothered by it, but the thing is, it's, it's maybe 100 RPMs off, but I don't have an electronic speedometer next to it all the time to verify. So I think it's, it's just fine. So yeah, new tires, new brakes, uh, no, brake line and brake fluid. I did a complete flush. Um, yeah, and grease in the front wheel bearings. I always do that when I take the front wheel off. So every time I install a new tire, the, gr uh, the bearings get some new grease. And then we're back. And now I'm going to try to get everything synced up. Okay, that's it. Bye.